Hey guys, welcome to my tent. So in this video, we are going to look at the pharmacology part of the general anesthetics that is the propofol, thiopentone as well as the ketamine. So we have a, we have a, gen, uh, we have a video on the general anesthesia, what is the introduction, the mechanism of action, adverse reactions and everything. Make sure to watch that before this so that you will get a better perspective on the given topic. So now let's move on to the pharmacology of the general anesthesia, propofol, thiopentone as well as the ketamine. Moving on to the first drug that is the propofol. So propofol is the most commonly used rapidly acting popular general anesthetic. So propofol is the most commonly used rapidly acting popular general anesthetic. So this is available as the 1% emulsion for the IV administration. Then it has a rapid onset of action as well as short duration of action. It is highly bound to the plasma proteins. It crosses the placental barrier. It is metabolized in the liver and is excreted in the urine. So it is available as the 1% emulsion for IV administration. It has a rapid onset and short duration of action. Highly bound to plasma proteins. Crosses placental barrier and it is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. So what is the mechanism of action? As I told you, we have the video. Make sure to watch that. The mechanism of action of general anesthesia is given in that video. Now let's look at the advantages of the propofol. So propofol, it helpful in the induction of anesthesia and recovery are both rapid. So uh, the induction of anesthesia and recovery both are rapid with the help of propofol. The propofol is also very suitable for the outpatient surgical procedures as well. That is the day care procedures. You can also use propofol. Then the air passages are not irritated. So in the uh, if the patient has asthma, if they are asthmatic, then we can also use propofol because the air passages are not irritated. Then a propofol also has anti-emetic effect that so that the post of nausea and vomiting both are rare. It also has anti-emetic effect. Then as I told you, propofol it is used for both induction as well as maintenance of the anesthesia. It is used for both induction as well as the maintenance of the anesthesia. Then propofol is also frequently used in the ICU for the intubated patients. For the intubated patients in the ICU, propofol is frequently used in all the hospitals then it can also be used in the status epilepticus if no other drugs are working and if the seizures are not controlled in the status epilepticus finally we can go for propofol then what are the disadvantages of the propofol disadvantages are it causes respiratory depression and fall in bp so it causes respiratory depression and fall in bp then when you inject the propofol there is pain on injection so to relieve the pain what we do we give a lignocaine to reduce the pain during injection then at high doses propofol causes acidosis and also rise in the blood lipid levels so it, on high doses it causes acidosis as well as the rise in the blood lipid levels so these are the disadvantages of the propofol now no, let's move on to the next drug that is the thiopentone sodium so moving on to the thiopentone sodium let's look at its features it is an ultra short acting barbiturate as we have discussed in the barbiturates or all the given drugs in there what is the mechanism of action of barbiturate make sure to watch that so it is an ultra short acting barbiturate and also we can give it IV for the induction of anesthesia it has a rapid onset as well as a short duration of action you can say that shortest duration of action generally 5 to 8 minutes 5 to 8 minutes so thiopentone sodium is highly alkaline and also highly irritant and also it is prepared fresh solution before the injection before injection you have to prepare a fresh solution of the thiopentone sodium so these are the features of the thiopentone sodium now mechanism action as i just showed you make sure to watch that barbiturate video and come back here because it is the mechanism action of barbiturates are very important now let's look at that uh, after a single iv dose of thiopentone sodium what happens it rapidly enters into the highly perfused organs that is the brain liver as well as the heart so these are the highly perfused organs of the body right so after you give a single iv dose it enters into the highly perfused organs brain liver and heart and it produces anesthesia okay then what happens as the uh, so after entering into brain heart and liver the level of the drug in the blood falls rapidly so level of the blood in the uh, level of the drug in the blood falls rapidly so then what happens now what happens the drug diffuses back from the brain liver and heart into the blood so now the drug diffuses back from the brain liver and heart into the blood going into the skeletal muscle and adipose tissue so from brain liver and heart it goes back into the blood back into the skeletal muscle and the adipose tissue so what happens this redistribution causes 
termination of the drug action since the drug came from uh, from the brain back to the skeletal muscle and the adipose tissue right so there is no more drug in the brain so it causes termination of the, uh, termination of the drug action now we can think that if uh, the drug action is terminated we can give one more dose but no we cannot we cannot give repeated doses of the thiopetone sodium because it will result in accumulation the uh, drug will accumulate in the body and the recovery of the patient will be delayed because as long as the drug remains in the body it will delay the recovery of the patient so this is the problem with the thiopetone that's why we popularly use propofol now let's look at the advantages of the thiopentone as i told you we have a rapid induction and the rapid recovery of the anesthesia so with the help of the thiopentone there is rapid induction and rapid recovery of the anesthesia then it does not sensitize myocardium to the circulating catecholamines so it does not sensitize the myocardium to the circulating catecholamines so what are the disadvantages of the thiopentone let's look at it it causes depression of the respiratory center vasomotor center as well as the myocardium so uh, the thiopentone sodium it causes depression of the respiratory center vasomotor center as well as myocardium then it is also a poor analgesic as well as a muscle relaxant so causing laryngospasm as well so thiopentone is a poor analgesic as well as a muscle relaxant and then we have a if if suppose we give thiopentone sodium intra arterial injection it causes sudden vasospasm vasospasm causing gangrene sudden vasospasm causing gangrene then it can also precipitate acute intermittent intermittent porphyria so these are all the advantages disadvantages of the thiopentone you can have a look at it moving on to ketamine so coming to ketamine ketamine causes dissociative anesthesia so ketamine causes dissociative anesthesia because it is an nmda blocker that is the glutamate receptors it is an nmda blocker causing dissociative anesthesia and it causes sedation amnesia and marked analgesia along with totally unresponsive to commands as well as dissociation from the surrounding and reality so when the patient is on ketamine he is sedated amnesic there is marked analgesia he is totally unresponsive to any commands and he is dissociated from the surrounding and the reality now what is the site of action of ketamine ketamine acts on the cortex and the subcortical areas acts on the cortex and the subcortical areas ketamine is highly lipid soluble it is redistribution like the thiopentone is present here also and it is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the bile or urine again highly lipid highly lipid soluble and like the thiopentone redistribution is present in ketamine also it is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the bile or urine then what are the uses of ketamine and ketamine we, they are used for the operations on head and neck as well as face head and neck and face we can use it for operations and also to dress the burnt wounds we can use it and also it is helpful in the asthmatics for undergoing any short procedures as well so for all these we will use ketamine so what are the disadvantages of ketamine ketamine will lead to increase in the blood pressure heart rate as well as cardiac output it increases blood pressure heart rate as well as cardiac output therefore it is contraindicated in patients with hypertension as well as ischemic heart disease so this also is uh, uh, that another disadvantage is that it helps in increasing the uh, intracranial pressure sorry this also increases the intracranial pressure and it also causes emergence of the delirium emergence delirium as well as hallucinations so these are all the disadvantages of the ketamine so thank you guys thank you for watching video till the end make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share this video with other friends who want to learn more about the pharmacology so you can follow on or follow me on instagram and also in the join the community to access this handwritten beautifully uh, beautifully handwritten notes the, uh, the link is in the channel description go to my channel and the, in the description we have a link to the instagram as well as the community so if there is any support from you it is heartily appreciated and i'll see you in the next video bye